the Lord speaks by his spirit through the Bible, through prayer, and through our circumstances. Are you attuned to his voice? He loves it when you talk to him. He loves it when you listen to him. And if you learn to listen to him when you're young, that's something that'll stay with you all your life. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, welcome to those of you who've stayed in bed online. <laughs> nice to have you with us. Today, we start a new series called A Prayerful Life with our topic, as we've just sung, Speak, O Lord. I hope that's the posture of your heart this morning, Speak, O Lord. Uh, kids, there are some activity sheets at the front here. Some of you are already making the most of those. Just feel free to come on down and uh, grab those and make use of them as I speak. It's lovely to have the kids with us because this morning we'll take a look at one of the beautiful stories of the Old Testament, the story of the Lord speaking to a young boy, actually a young lad named Samuel. Great reminder that God speaks to children, kids. Those kids who are here this morning, God uh, can speak to you. God wants to speak to you. But like Samuel, you'll need to learn to hear his voice. And in fact, for those of us who are older, let me remind you, Jesus says, unless you change and become like these little ones, you won't see the kingdom of God. As we get older, the danger is that we become so kind of clever and sophisticated, we lose our, that, that childlike simplicity of faith that we see in children and actually that God requires of us, of all of us. If you know the story of Samuel, you recall that he was something of a miracle baby. His mother Hannah was not able to have children. Uh, some of you know my daughter Ashley and her husband Sam were told by medical specialists that they would never be able to have children. Um, she's about to have number three. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, literally any day, any, any, any minute now. Uh, no, she's, no, she's not in hospital, but she's, she's overdue. But, you know, miracles still happen. And as for Samuel's mother, Hannah, well, she cried out to God. We read in the scripture, she, she poured out her soul to him. Isn't that a, a wonderful phrase? She poured out her soul in a desperation of prayer. Uh, poured out her soul to the Lord, and the Lord was gracious to her. Uh, gave her five children in the end. And, uh, you know, her response was to dedicate young Sam's life fully to the Lord. She said, um, for his whole life, he shall be given over to the Lord. And so the setting of the story today is uh, one in which the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions, it actually says in the passage. So we understand from scripture, there are periods of history actually when the Lord speaks very actively and clearly and other periods of history where the Lord speaks less. So in Moses' day, the Lord, we know, spoke audibly through a burning bush to Moses. Um, God spoke to Moses. God spoke to him through his life. God delivered the Ten Commandments to Moses. In fact, in Exodus 33, we read the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one would speak to their friend. Remarkable verse. But then fast forward to the time of the judges, which was a period of about 270 years and the spiritual tone of that period was well summarised by Judges 17.6. In those days, Israel had no king, and everyone just did as they saw fit. In those days, Israel had no earthly king, but neither did they recognise the kingship of Yahweh. And so everyone just did whatever they felt like, is what it's basically saying. They did whatever that seemed right to them in their own eyes. They just did that, with no reference to God or God's laws, or God's ways. And so in that day, the word of the Lord was rare, and there were not many visions. Well, what about today? Well, biblically speaking, we live in a period known as the end times, or the last days. And the promise of Scripture is that in these last days, if you think back to Acts 2, which is a quote of Joel 2, your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. This is the way that God will speak to his people. I'm no longer clear about which category I fit into, actually. Uh, I'm rapidly moving in the dreams direction. But unlike 
Samuel, we live in a time when the Lord does speak. And those who have ears to hear will hear his voice as we see the fulfillment of that promise the Holy Spirit's poured out on men and women, young and old, adults and children. So let's read this story about Samuel. This is a young boy who hears from the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 1 to 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. Eli was the priest. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare and there were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, no, no, I didn't call you. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. My son Eli said, I did not call. Go back to sleep. Go back. How many parents have said that over the years? Go back to bed. Go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called, Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, if he calls you, and if he calls you, say, (laughs) speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. So Samuel, thinking that it's Eli the priest calling his name, has this beautiful childlike response. He gets up and he, he runs to Eli and says, here I am. You called me, just like all parents here. When you call your kids, here I am, what would you like me to do? It's this beautiful thing. Here I am. How can I help? <clears throat> yeah. After calling three times, the Bible says that the Lord came and stood there. The Lord came. Get that. And stood there, calling. Samuel. Samuel. Then after the third time, as instructed by Eli the priest, this time, Samuel responds, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So there are a number of things about Samuel's posture, let me suggest, his disposition that we can learn from as we seek to listen for the voice of God in our own lives, taking on that sort of childlike posture. Uh, He was, we might suggest, open, ready, and humble. He had a posture of uh, openness and availability. Secondly, it's a posture of willingness to serve, readiness. He's ready, ready to respond, ready to step in and help. And then thirdly, it's a posture of humility and acceptance of the truth that there are things that I don't fully understand, actually. There are things I don't know. There are times I don't know what to do. I don't have all the answers, and so I need to turn to the Lord. I love that story. You might be familiar with it in uh, Second Chronicles, where the Israelites are under attack and they feel overwhelmed and anxious about their situation. Anyone ever felt overwhelmed or anxious? Yes, about their situation. Here's their response. We have no power to face this vast army that's attacking us, We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Let me tell you, I've prayed that prayer many times in my life. It's a wonderful posture of humility and dependence upon the Lord. There's nothing like a bit of spiritual attack and personal struggle to bring us to a point of desperation in prayer. What a wonderful thing that during those times we say, Lord, Lord, I I don't know what to do. Have you ever prayed that? I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. I want to keep my eyes fixed on you. I want to walk with you. And you walk with me through this dark valley. So I'm going to assume that most of us in the room this morning believe that God still speaks today. 
And if that's true, then the logical question is, how does God speak? Now, I'd, maybe there's exceptions to this, but I don't think that I've ever met anyone who's heard an audible voice of God. If you have, I'd love to hear that story. I've not met anyone who has had that experience. But there's no doubt in my mind that God speaks to his people and he does so in a variety of ways. You know, I know many people who quite regularly have dreams that the Lord gives them. I've got a guy who rings me from time to time. He said, I had another dream. Let me just tell you my dream. This is what I think the Lord's saying. Over time, they've learned to discern the voice of God and his clear direction through their dreams. You know, Samuel, it's interesting, he didn't immediately recognize the voice of God, but he learned to discern it. And then through his life, he learned to discern the voice of God. The same is true for us as we nurture a prayerful life. Over time, we learn to discern and recognize the voice of God. Many people would say that God speaks to them through his creation. Uh, that shouldn't surprise us. The scriptures talk about that. Uh, Psalm 19 says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. In other words, God speaks through his creation. He reveals his nature, his love, his power, his attention to detail through the created order. But there are three key ways the Lord speaks to us today by his spirit that I want to just touch on this morning and focus on. There may be others, but the three I want to focus on are that the, that the Lord speaks by his spirit through the Bible, through prayer, and through our circumstances. So number one, I believe that the Bible is the key way that the Lord speaks to us today. From time to time, Craig Siggins, who's our, um, is the pastor of our Thornley campus, he goes um, prospecting for gold. I don't know if you're aware of this. Um, it's a bit of a hobby of his. In fact, even, I think it's tomorrow, he heads off to a place called Coolgardie, out uh, near Kalgoorlie, out in the desert there, to the gold fields, partly for that purpose. He's got other things to do there, but he's partly going to be doing some prospecting. Now, uh, Craig will be the first to tell you that to find gold, you don't just wander along the main street of Cool Guardian and just you know, pick up giant nuggets and put them in your basket. <laughs> you know, if only it were that simple. Uh, but no, prospecting for gold takes a lot of intentionality. It takes research and effort. It takes time and patience. They're called the gold fields because there's gold. There is gold there. But uh, for those who are prepared to immerse themselves in that practice, that discipline, the rewards are there in terms of finding gold. I want to suggest that the same is true in the Word of God. There's gold. There's gold in these pages. But the Lord wants to plant in us a hunger for his word. He wants to sow in us a discipline that requires some effort and some time and some patience on our part to spend investing in the pages of this book, immersing ourselves in the scriptures in order to discover the specific word he has for us in any given season. In order to discover the gold that is to be found in these pages, it takes some prospecting. A few years ago, I went through a, uh, a brief season where I was waking up at 3 a.m. every night, same time every night, 3 a.m., couldn't believe it. After a few nights of this, I sensed that it was the Lord, actually, getting my attention. And so I started getting up just for half an hour to an hour to read the Word and to pray. I suppose you might say, in a sense, my response to that prompting from the Lord was, a, it was my own, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I was kind of saying, okay, Lord, if you want to wake me up at 3 a.m., then I'll, I'll get up and I'll spend some time with you. I'd make myself a cup of tea and just sit for a while and listen and read. And at one of those 3 a.m. appointments, I was reading through Isaiah in my regular reading practice, actually. 
And a particular verse just leapt out of the page at me. And it was Isaiah 50, verse 4, which if we can put that up on the screen, M. It says, The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. I tell you what, do you reckon that verse leapt out at the page at 3 a.m. that particular morning? God spoke to me through that verse and I realised that he was waking me up because he needed my full attention, because he was instructing me, he would give me specific words for people that I knew would be life for them, things I had to share with specific people, words that would encourage and sustain them. The Lord's giving me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning as one being taught. I needed to listen. And maybe the problem was the Lord couldn't get my attention during the day because I was too busy. There's a thing for you. But I had that experience in the context of a prayerful life, a life in which I was spending time in the Word of God, prospecting for the gold the Lord would reveal to me. The second way the Lord speaks is through prayer. And um, you might find it a surprising thing for me to say, I don't find it easy to pray. And so what I find is that I, I need to set up some systems, um, some disciplines, I suppose, that will help me to pray. And I need to change them around a bit, otherwise they become sort of routine and they can lose their, their meaning. And so I need to be a bit creative. You know, every week in my world, there are three or four groups that I connect with where we pray together. And I find that very often the Lord speaks to me in the context of those times of prayer as I come with a heart of expectation that he'll speak to me. I'll get a prompting from the Lord to call a particular person or read a particular scripture, take a particular action. I've learned to discern the voice of God. My sheep hear my voice. I've learned to discern the voice of God and to be attentive when I'm in a prayer meeting and to be expectant, to take on the posture of Samuel. I wonder if as you come to church this morning, you come expectant that God is going to speak to you. I wonder if you've come this morning with uh, the posture of Samuel, that you've got a heart that's, that's open and that's ready to receive a heart of humility. I don't have all the answers, but Lord, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you. Let me share with you a new system in prayer that I've recently set up for myself. It's not rocket science, let me tell you, but, let me, but maybe the Lord will prompt you to do something similar. I now have a prayer journal. And it's a prayer journal with a monthly, I've literally just started this in the month of July, a prayer journal with a monthly focus. And so for the month of July, I've just listed several categories for prayer in my prayer journal, you know, family, pastoral things, leadership issues, personal issues, one or two others one for my mp3. In each category, I've listed some key specific measurable things that I'm asking the Lord for through the month of July. Lord, this is what I'm asking you through this month. If it doesn't happen in July, I'm going to continue on in August, September, as long as it takes. So even this last week when people ask me as they do, will you please be praying for me? I say, yes. I go home and I write their name down in my prayer journal. I need, because I need a reminder. I'm in that older category of the dreaming dreams thing, you know. I need reminders. I need to write things down. Helps me. Helps me to pray. And children, you know, this is something very simple you can do. You should ask your mum and dad for a little notebook you can use. They can help you with that. The Lord loves it when you talk to him. Children, he loves it when you talk to him. He loves it when you listen to him. And if you learn to listen to him when you're young, That's something that'll stay with you all your life. It's a beautiful thing. My little granddaughter, Rosie, has uh, recently turned four. Um, Her mum and dad pray with her every night. And uh, the other day, her mum recorded her prayer. It was a beautiful prayer. And with her permission, um, I'd like to just share it with you this morning, just very brief. Let's have a look. 
Okay, bye. Thank you for all the fun things that you made. All the bugs. Thank you for the ants and spiders and the grasshoppers and ants. And we thank you for all the pets that you made. And we thank you for all the children and babies. Thank you for your name. Amen. Amen. Oh, that melts the grandfather's heart, I tell you. <laughs> You know, and it brings a smile to God's face as well. And as I listened to that, I was reminded of Psalm 8, which says, through the praise of children and infants. Did you get that? Through the praise of children and infants, what happens? You have established a stronghold against your enemies. Wow, well, I don't know about you, I think, well, that's a surprising end to that verse. Through the praise of children and infants, you've established a stronghold against your enemies. You might think that prayer of Rosie's is cute. I, I mean, I do. Of course it is. Absolutely it is. You know what? There's more power in the prayers of children than we understand. Parents, teach your children to pray. Pray with your children. Encourage your children to pray. Help them. The third thing is circumstances. That God speaks. Speak, O oh Lord. God speaks through the Word of God, His Bible. He speaks through prayer. And thirdly, He speaks through circumstances. If we have ears to hear, God will speak to us in the everyday circumstances of life. And He invites us to discover and live a prayerful life. This is what we're going to be unpacking over the next couple of months, actually, through this month and the next month. To nurture an awareness of the presence of God in the ordinary day-to-day -day lives that we live. As we get up in the morning, as we shower, as we eat, as we go to work, as we enjoy recreation, as we study, as we lie down at night, the Lord is with us. His presence is is with us. The Lord speaks to us. The Lord speaks to you through the everyday circumstances of your life. Are you attuned to his voice? Well, watch out if you're not, because he'll start waking up at 3 a.m. to get your attention. <laughs> Nobody wants that. <laughs> this week on Wednesday morning, we had a staff prayer meeting as we do every week. Often the Lord just prompts me with something during those staff meetings. And at that meeting, Jonathan shared a story of a time when the Lord spoke clearly to him while he was shopping at the supermarket. And uh, as he told the story, I thought, yeah, that's, uh, I, that's the story for this morning. That's the story we need to hear. So Jonathan, why don't you come up and just share that story with us? Yeah, so this happened when um, we were still living in Melbourne and I was doing my usual shopping, getting ready. And the plan was that I was shopping to prepare uh, dinner for my family, Janelle and the kids were at work and at school. And uh, as I was pushing the trolley and almost finished with my shopping, I felt this very strong prompting to saying, as if I was hearing it, but I didn't hear it, I want you to cook uh, dinner for someone. I said, I want you to cook dinner for someone. I was like, what? You know, pushing trolley and this is so unusual. I was like, who is a big question. Anyway, I started picking up, okay, I'll, I'll, I prepared dinner for, for someone, and so I bought extra meat and everything, went home, unloaded the shopping, and started cooking for two dinners for my family, and for this dinner that, that I felt the Lord was saying to me, I want you to cook dinner for someone. And as I was preparing the dinner, halfway through that cooking process, almost finished, my phone rang. And, uh, and it was the receptionist at my church at that time. And, and this lady on the other end said, oh, hi, Jonathan. Uh, my name is blah, blah, blah. I'm from Enjoy Church. And uh, one couple in our family, the wife has just had a miscarriage. And she was in hospital for five days. And they're going home tonight. I was just wondering if you can provide a meal for them. And I was looking at the stove you know, the meal is almost ready, and I was on the phone, and I go, yeah, yeah, I can do that. And, uh, and so they go, oh, that's wonderful, thank you so much. And then she hung up, I finished the meal, 
Janelle came home and I told her the story and said, this is what happened. And so we've got to drop this meal to this family. And Janelle was like, yep, okay, let's do that. And so off we went at six o'clock, knock on the door and the husband opened the door and I said, hey, uh, we're here to bring dinner for you. And his eyes just started watering and just cried in tears. And the wife came out and they were all in tears. And the wife was so emotionally uh, tired. And she goes, come on, guys, come on in. And so we spread the dinner on the table. And they said, why don't you join us? It's like, yeah, okay. So we stayed. And we actually stayed until 9.30. And it ended up to be just this beautiful time of sharing and encouragement and prayer, and they could not believe that we rock up at their door with dinner ready to eat. And, uh, and my prayer and encouragement for all of us this morning is that when we hear and feel those promptings from the Lord, my challenge for you and I is that let's be discerning to be ready to obey because we just don't know what God is going to do in other people's lives. Amen. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan. You know, um, this is, I think, how life should be. Life with the Lord, that we just live our lives attentive to the Spirit. Um, this, this week I've been praying for my neighbours. Do you, do you pray for your neighbours? Do you know your neighbours? Yes. I've been praying for my neighbours and there's a guy, um, a couple of doors down, the Egyptian family just moved in, Islamic. I've just been praying for him, just feel prompted to pray for him and I pulled into my driveway. I drove past his house the other day on my way home and pulled into my driveway and his car wasn't there, but I sat in my car for a minute and I said, Lord, I'd just love the opportunity to talk to this guy again. Would you give me that opportunity? He came out, so I couldn't believe it. Went to my letterbox to check the mail. Morning, oh no, good afternoon. There he is, he's just right there. He's just poured into his driveway, just checking his letterbox. And uh, we had a, probably about a 10 minute conversation about all sorts of things. We're just, it's just a beginning of a process. But the Lord's at work. These are the promptings of the Holy Spirit. This is God at work in my day-to-day circumstances in the place where I live. You know, the other circumstances the Lord often uses to speak to us, the circumstances of our pain and our struggles. It was C.S. Lewis who famously said, God whispers to us in our pleasures. He speaks in our conscience but shouts in our pains. It's God's megaphone to rouse a deaf world. So as we close, I expect that the Lord will be speaking to many of us, actually. That's my expectation, and what your expectation is. My belief is the Lord is prompting many of us in all sorts of different ways. I wonder if you this morning have the posture of Samuel, that you have an openness of spirit, that you have a readiness to respond, that you've got an inherent humility. Let's bow in prayer together as we close. As we bow, why don't you just pause and consider when and where do you feel closest to the Lord? When have you sensed his presence recently? When have you discerned his voice? Do you have a hunger for his presence? Do you have a hunger for his word? Is there a simple new practice you can begin even this week, even today? that will help you. Speak, O Lord, we pray. Speak to your people. Lord, as your sheep, help us to learn what it means to be those who hear and discern your voice. We thank you, Lord, that your heart's desire is to have a relationship with us that's that's living, that's dynamic, that interrupts us at the supermarket, that prompts us to speak to our neighbours, that teaches us how to be more loving within our families and within our networks. 
that you give us an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Speak, Lord, we pray. And Lord, we bring to you this next little season as we work through this series on a prayerful life. We pray, Lord, I pray that this would be more than just theory, but that you would introduce us to new depths of what it means to be a people of prayer, that you'd guide us and lead us in the way everlasting. Teach us, Lord, and speak, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.